When we're talking about trading options, we're talking about an opportunity for a trader to speculate on the direction of a security or to hedge your position. But even though they're flexible, it does come with increased risk. And one of those factors that can have the biggest impact on your option price is volatility. And as we're moving along here, if you take a second, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, that way you can be notified when these videos go live. So what's volatility? It's just a measure of the amount by which a security's price tends to fluctuate. And there are different ways that you can measure volatility, but one of the most popular is the VIX. That's the CBOE volatility index. This is a real-time index and it measures the expected volatility of the options on the S&P 500 index over the next 30 days. And oftentimes people call the VIX the fear index because it does tend to rise when markets are declining and fall when markets are rising. Now, the impact of volatility on options prices can be significant, and that's because option prices are directly affected by changes in the underlying securities price and by changes in the expectation of future price movements. So when markets are volatile, option prices tend to be more expensive because there's greater uncertainty about the future direction of prices. On the flip side, though, when markets are less volatile, option prices tend to be cheaper because there's less uncertainty. So as an example, let's say you're considering buying a call option, stock XYZ, with a strike price of $50 and an expiration date of one month from today. So the current price is $49. Historical data shows that it moves about two bucks. So based on this information, you would expect XYZ to move up or down by $2 on average over the next month. Well, let's say you're considering buying a call option on an ABC stock, strike price of 50, expiration date one month out, Current price is also 49, but data shows it has a standard deviation of $4 over the past month. So based on that information alone, you'd expect ABC to move up or down by $4 on average. So all else being equal, options on ABC stock are going to be more expensive than options on XYZ stock because ABC stock is more volatile than XYZ stock. So how do you place your options orders when the markets are volatile? The key is to use limit orders, don't use market orders. And honestly, limit orders for us at NetPix, this is our standard order entry type that we use. A market order is an order to buy or sell a security at the best available price. Keywords, best available. So you might be looking to enter at one price, but then get filled at a totally different price. Limit order, buy or sell a security at a specified price or better. So when you place a limit order, you're guaranteed to get your trade filled at or below your limit price if you're buying or at or above your limit price if you're selling. So for example, let's say you want to buy shares of XYZ. It's currently trading at $10 a share. You place a limit order to buy 100 shares of that stock at $9.50. So if the stock does drop to $9.50, your trade will be executed. You'll pay $950 for those 100 shares. But if that stock doesn't go to $9.50, it just continues to rally. You're not going to be executed into that trade. So let's talk about options. When we enter options orders, we teach our traders to start with the mid price of the bid and ask price. So imagine you're bullish on a stock looking to buy a call option. So the premium is around $1.90. The bid price is $1.75. So we take the average of these two prices and we enter our initial order to buy at $1.82. So if the premium goes to our price point, we're going to get filled. So limit orders just gives you a lot more control over your trades than market orders because you do get to specify the price that you want. And in volatile markets, this type of control is extremely helpful. But sometimes your order is not going to get filled. The price may not move there. It might stay too far away. So you have to adjust. So if you're buying options, you can adjust your order by just moving the price higher. However, if you move it too much, you may end up paying too much for the contract and your risk and reward scenario may not be looking too good. If you're selling options, move the price lower. The lower you move the price, the better your chance of getting filled. Same thing. So let's get some key points here. In volatile markets, use limit orders. Don't use market orders. Limit order, just buy or sell a security at a specified price or better. When you're buying or selling options, look at the mid price of the bid and ask price. Adjust from there if you're not getting filled. And when you are adjusting, be very careful. Don't move it too much. We don't want our risk and reward scenario to be out of whack. So look at the volatility in the market, something that every trader has faced or is going to face. But there are ways to make your trades more precise and cut down on unnecessary risk. And that is using limit orders, not market ones. When we're talking about volatility. Sometimes people look for a little bit safer way to make income and dividend stocks actually can provide the stability and growth for your portfolio. So we actually have a list of 101 dividend stocks that we like. 
So with our list, you can explore different types of dividend stocks, find the one that's going to fit you. And you can download this free report. The link is above. It's below in the description. Again, it's totally free. Uh, caution, nothing to read it. Anyways, hit like, hit subscribe. We'll talk to you.